Shalom, it's Sahila from the Kifar, and this video is for language teachers who are accustomed to teaching in a face-to-face -face classroom, but now have to figure out how they're going to teach language online. So I have been teaching Hebrew online going on five years now, and so I have a lot of tools and tricks and things in my bag that I am happy to share with you. If you are really scrambling and you need like some one-on-one -on -one assistance, reach out to me. My information is in the description, and I will be happy to help you. Um, but in this video, I'm going to show you one of of my favorite tools to use in my online lessons. And I love it because you can use it to teach so many different language domains, whether you are focusing on reading, writing, speaking, or listening, or all of the above. You can use this tool to incorporate all of that. You can also adjust it um, for whatever age level you are teaching, for whatever language level you are teaching, and you can use it basically for, for any language and for any group of students that you are teaching. Okay, so I'm going to show you some of the actual activities activities that I have used uh, with my students, and then I'm going to show you how to create those activities. Okay, so we'll get into that right now. All right, so this tool is called ClassKick, and it is free. There is a paid version, but you can do a whole lot with the free version, um, which is what I use, and I do a whole lot with it. So you'll need to sign up to create an account. You're the teacher, so you'll pick the teacher account. Um, you can have your students create an account, but it's also not necessary, and I'll show you why later on, that students can do their work, um, and you can see everything that they're working on, and they don't necessarily need to create an account if that is gonna be a hassle for you. Okay, so once you click on teacher, it'll set you up on how to create your account. So this is what your dashboard will look like. This is where you will create all of your different assignments and you can create one assignment per class that you have. If you only have one class, you can create different assignments per day. Um, just know that for the free version, you have a max of 20 assignments. So you don't want to go overboard. If you are using this for a month, for instance, you won't be able to create one every day. You'll have to go back and delete some of them if you do choose to do that. There is also a sample assignment, um, and it's designed for students to sort of see how they can work through ClassKick. You can also do this. Um, it'll show up again once you set up your account, and it's actually a really good idea for you to go through this because you'll get a sense of all of the different things that you can do, and then you can also give it to your students because it'll give them sort of a tutorial. Okay, but now I'm going to walk you through um, some actual assignments and things that I've created and, and what that looks like. So when you click on an assignment or you hit add new assignment, you'll have three tabs, the edit, assign, and then view work. So edit, this is where you are creating all of the assignments. Assign is if you are giving this for homework, you can just click this link here copy the link and send this to students. So remember when I said that you can have students create an account, but you don't necessarily have to, this is the option that you can use if you don't wanna have them create an account, you can just copy the link and send it to them and they can start working on this right away. And then we have the view work option. So if you are using ClassKick during a live session and students are working on it, what's great about this is as the teacher, you can see all your students working at once, okay? So you can scroll up and down and you can see all of your students work. If they are doing work independently and somebody has a question, they can raise their hand so you can see what students are doing in real time. All right, so now let's go back to the edit page and now I'll show you a couple of the different assignments that I've done. So one of them um, that I really like to do is bingo. And so I set it up on my end and then I just narrate the students through what it is that we're doing. So this is an, an example of um, an activity that we would do live together as a class. So there are two ways to upload pictures in ClassKick and you would need them both for different things. So if you are uploading a static image that you do not want students to move, you'll use the camera icon and just upload your image from there. Now you can move it at any time. You can make it smaller or larger. Any changes that you make on this side, on the edit side, will be transferred to the student side. So if they've already started working and you decide to make this box smaller, it's going to jack up all of their work. So whatever edits you want to make on this page, you want to do it before the students start working. And again, if you pick the static image using the camera, only you will be able to move this around or make changes. Students won't be able to do that on their end. If, however, like in the case of Bingo, you want students to be able to move these images around, you're going to upload using this manipulatives feature. 
Okay, so you'll click add manipulatives. And then if you ever want to double check if your pictures are movable, hover over them and you'll see this little manipulatives icon. And that means that students will be able to move them. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just Google like a grid with nine boxes, get that image, upload it here using the camera icon. And then I'll always provide more images than I have boxes for. So if I'm giving them a nine box bingo card, then I'll provide 12 or more images. Then on the student side, and this is what we do in class. So I'll say you have three minutes minutes or however many minutes you want to provide to set up your bingo board. And again, you don't want to do this because if you do this, then it'll mess it up on the student side. I'm just showing you what the student would do. They would pick whatever numbers they want. And now, just like I showed you how on the the student view page, you'll be able to see each student as they create their bingo board. You'll see once they're all done, you'll see which numbers they chose, and then you can start the bingo game. And then students can use the pencil icon, the pen, or the highlighter icon to mark their board. You can see what it is that they're doing. So if they made a mistake or if they're trying to cheat, you'll see that as you watch them as they go through the game. And now I'll show you another activity. Okay, so this is an example of an assignment that students can complete independently. And so what I did was I clicked the microphone button and I recorded a question, okay, along with the image that I used that they were familiar with to help them remember what the question meant and how to answer it. Once you do your recording, you are then able to drag it wherever you want it to go. And now on the student side, click their microphone and then record their audio, which they can then drag underneath the picture. If you are teaching a gendered language like Hebrew, then you can create two of these. I created one where I was asking the questions in the masculine form, the next page where I was asking the questions in the feminine form. So this was another example. This was an activity that I created for an older class. So I inserted the manipulative images. Okay, we see that manipulative icon, and that means that students can move them around. And then I recorded instructions. For instance, put the kettle on the stove. And of course, this is all in Hebrew. Putting the kettle on the stove, and in this case, we were learning about kitchen items. So put the kettle on the stove, put the spoon in the sink, etc. Okay, so had to do those things based on the instructions that I left. You can do a variety of things. If your students um, have the ability to type in Hebrew, they have Hebrew keyboards, you can have them here label, okay? Press the T, add the text box, and then they can label the various kitchen items. Um, you can have them place the various items wherever they want, and then they record where the various items are. So it really just depends on, again, which domains you want them to work on. There's really no end to what you can do with class cake. So as another example, I created a box using this line function here. Use the text boxes to add numbers and then use the manipulatives to add um, pictures here. And then students had to arrange them in order of their morning routines and then write sentences describing their morning routines. In another assignment, I had them, instead of writing the sentences with the text box, record. Uh, as another assignment, just created these grids using this line function added numbers using the text boxes, and added these GIFs. You can add GIFs or static images um, for the with the manipulatives function. And then I called out the activity that the person was doing, like number one, uh, Himit Labeshet, she's getting dressed, and they would have to find that one and pull it down to number one. And I'll show you one last one, and then that's it. This was a Venn diagram image and uploaded it, then used the text box to write bedroom and bathroom, and then again, provided these manipulative images and they need to sort now what they find in a bathroom, what they find in a bedroom, and what they find in both. You can literally create whatever you can imagine um, using Classkick. There's almost no limit to what you can do. There are also other options that I haven't even touched on. Definitely go through the sample assignment just to get a feel for how to use these things. Um, so just play around with it and if you need additional ideas um, for activities or there's a specific domain that you're kind of stuck on, on. Again, feel free to reach out to me. I am happy to help. Okay, so thank you for watching. Toda la and I'll see you for the next video. Later out.